hydration is important. Hi guys and welcome back. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video mainly because I have not been feeling the greatest. Um, so, but today we're just pushing through and we're just gonna do this and hopefully it turns out okay. So I have a couple of different things to go over today. Um, I got a couple of questions on my last couple of videos. So I'm gonna um, answer those in the beginning and then I got some new diagnosis as well and we'll go over that and um, I also have a new idea. Um, so we'll get to all of that in a minute. So the couple of questions that I got on my last two videos, um, the first one is um, someone had asked how I deal with worrying about my inappropriate sinus tachycardia all the time. Uh, and honestly, it's difficult. Um, I still, I've been dealing with the IST for um, about two years now and there are still days where I still worry about my heart rate even though I know it's not going to kill me and I know that my heart rate being up um, isn't that big of a deal. Um, my anxiety still gets the best of me sometimes. Um, and honestly, the only thing that I've found that helps me with that is one, reminding myself that it's not going to kill me. Um, and two, focusing on my breathing, um, focusing on something other than uh, my heart problem, other than the IST. Um, especially um, knowing that if I'm already anxious about it and I'm already worried about it, the more that I continue to be anxious and the more that I continue to be worried, um, it's just gonna make it worse. So um, for me, focusing on something else um, or focusing on um, a Bible verse that talks about peace um, or reciting scripture in my head or just thinking about anything other than the current tachycardia that I'm experiencing um, is really how I deal with that kind of um, worry that comes along with it. Um, I've gotten to the point now where while I do still get anxious about it, um, I more so get angry because there's no reason for my body to be experiencing the tachycardia and it just frustrates me because it makes things harder than they need to be. So. I guess just reminding yourself that it's not going to hurt you, that it's not going to kill you. Um, it is uncomfortable and it's inconvenient, but um, the sooner that you focus on relaxing, laying down, putting your feet up and focusing on your breathing, the sooner that tachycardia episode is going to end. Um, and also something to consider is sometimes the medicines that they put you on, the different beta blockers or calcium, calcium channel blockers um, can also have anxiety as a side effect. Um, and so that can be inducing some anxiety too. Um, you can also try um, L-theanine. Um, you can get it in liquid form or in pill form and it's just a natural herb that helps calm your body. Um, myself and my dad use that. Um, and the liquid stuff is great because you just put a couple of drops underneath your tongue. Um, it tastes like orange and you hold it there for 30 seconds and it absorbs and works almost instantly. So that's in the, another thing that I would recommend. Um, and I think you can get those drops off of Amazon. Um, I will try to find an Amazon link and put it in the description um, if you guys are interested in looking at that. Um, the other question was if I had been diagnosed or considered looking into POTS. Um, when I first started having issues, all of the ER doctors and all of the paramedics that I came in contact with all thought that I had um, POTS. And for those of you who don't know what POTS is, um, POTS stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. Um, and basically upon you know, laying down to sitting up or sitting up to standing or standing up too quickly, um, when you stand up, your heart rate, when you have POTS, your heart rate will skyrocket and your blood pressure will plummet causing you, um, some people pass out from it. Some people don't pass out, but they get really close to passing out. Um, it's considered um, dysautonomia, dysautonomia. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but, um, and having POTS can affect several other things as well. Um, I have looked into it and I asked my um, PCP about it. Um, she said that because I wasn't passing out that she didn't think that I had it. Um, 
but after doing more research, there's two different types of POTS and not all POTS patients pass out. Um, that happens very rarely, usually only if you have um, another disorder along with POTS. I don't remember what it's called. Um, so I get really lightheaded, I get really dizzy, and I get um, really close to passing out. I'm usually able to pull myself out of it. Um, and so I really need to go to my electrophysiologist and have him um, do the tilt table test. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because in the past month I have been given so many referrals for so many different specialists and honestly at this point I am like so done with doctors. So done. Um, but I've been doing research into POTS because I think that that might be part of my um, issues. Um, but I have a new referral to go see a new electrophysiologist um, to get a second opinion and so I just haven't made that appointment yet because I have to drive three hours away for it and it's just a big ordeal and um, I'm actually going to him specifically to be tested for POTS so we will see how that goes. Um, I'm convinced that that might be my problem but not positive so I am um, hopefully going to get um, checked out for that. Um, it's also a matter of fighting with my insurance to provide a tilt table test or to cover the cost for it because um, when I first started having heart problems, the original cardiologist I was seeing actually wanted me to have a tilt table test done to see if it was POTS, but my insurance company said that because I was a young 21 year old at the time with no other health issues besides that, that a tilt table test wasn't necessary and they weren't going to cover it which has never made sense to me um, because my insurance reps are not doctors. So I don't know how they feel okay making those calls if my cardiologist has ordered it. But that's besides the point. So um, I am getting checked out for POTS eventually when I make the appointment. Um, and I think that was all the questions. I do want to, you know, if you hear like screaming or like, loud chaos in the background. I have a really big family. Um, lots of little kids live in my house, so that's just them being crazy. Um, so I think that was all of the questions that I got. Um, oh no, I got one more. Someone had asked what helps with inappropriate sinus tachycardia. If you're not medicated, I would recommend going and seeing an electrophysiologist. Um, to get a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker. Um, there are several different ones that they can try you on. Um, I am currently unmedicated only because I had a um, sinus node ablation back in October. And since having that surgery, I now have tachycardia, but I also have bradycardia. So um, with tachycardia, my heart rate shoots too high and my heart and my body get stressed out and so then my heart rate will plummet into the 30s to try and reset itself but it's really bad at resetting itself um, and that's another reason why I have so many uh, episodes where I come really close to passing out um, and so we are not doing any beta blockers or calcium channel blockers right now because um, we're afraid that it will drop my heart rate too low and that could be dangerous and um, all of those medicines drop my already super low blood pressure even lower um, to where it's dangerous. So right now I am living life unmedicated. Um, so I've had to find things besides medication that help with the tachycardia. So I would say, um, for one, know your body's limits. Um, know what your body can handle. Um, know what your heart can handle. Um, and don't push yourself past those limits. Um, unless otherwise recommended by your doctor. Um, I went hiking a couple of weeks ago and that was a horrible idea. We weren't even really hiking. We walked up a trail that was not even, like it wasn't steep or anything, but about five minutes into the walk, my heart rate was already 160 and then plummeted into the 30s and I felt like I was gonna pass out and it was horrible and it was hot outside. Um, that's another thing, heat and inappropriate sinus tachycardia do not mix. Um, so if it's gonna be hot outside, I would do your best to stay inside or somewhere where it's cool. Um, hydration and electrolytes and salt are going to be your best friend. Um, so 
I think that um, the rule for hydration is that you're supposed to take half of your body weight and whatever half of your body weight is, is what you should be drinking in ounces a day. Um, but when you struggle with things like tachycardia, um, you're actually supposed to be drinking, um, I want to say you're supposed to be drinking twice as much um, as the average person. So for me, I try to drink 100 ounces of water a day. Um, usually more than that. I bought a big um, water bottle, it's 32 ounces, and I think that I drink three or four of those a day. Um, hydration is super important um, because the hydration and the electrolytes and the salt are what help the electrical pulses in your body do what they're supposed to. Um, so if you're dehydrated, you'll experience um, significantly more tachycardia than you would um, if you were properly hydrated. Um, salt is important. Um, salt helps your body absorb water. So um, for me, I personally, and people think this is gross, I personally like to drink um, pickle juice um, by the tablespoon um, because it has such a high salt concentration in it that um, it gets into my system quickly and helps my body absorb the water. Um, my dad puts um, cream of tartar and sea salt in a water bottle. Um, I think like a teaspoon of each and shakes it up and drinks um, about a tablespoon of that um, every couple of hours, I think. Um, that tastes disgusting to me though. I would much rather drink pickle juice because I like the way it tastes. So um, there are options out there. And then for electrolytes, um, my dad does the cream of tartar for the electrolytes. Um, cream of tartar has electrolytes in it when dissolved. Um, so you can do that in water. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the way it tastes, so I don't do that. But um, body armor drinks, if you get the big ones, have um, 1,300 grams of potassium, which is the electrolytes. Um, I think on average a day for an adult um, you need over 4,000 milligrams so the body armors um, not only do they have a ton of other vitamins and minerals in them but it'll help you get um, your electrolytes and stay hydrated they do make um, body armors that have um, artificial sweetener in them that way you're not getting all the extra sugar um, but I found that those are really good. You can also on Amazon buy um, electrolyte drops that are flavorless, um, clear drops, and you just add a couple to your water bottle um, and shake it up, and um, it's just the same as a body armor, but you're just drinking water. So there are tons of options out there. There are also electrolyte capsules that you can take um, I don't remember what they're called, but if I can find them, I will um, put a link in the description for that too. Um, so hydration, electrolytes, and salt are extremely, extremely important um, to lessen your tachycardia episodes and help, along with not doing things that are super stressful or pushing your body past its limits. That is what I would recommend. Also making sure that you get enough sleep at night um, when your body is sleep deprived. Um, you're more likely to have more tachycardia episodes and you're more likely uh, it's more likely for your heart to act up um, because your body is exhausted and running on not enough sleep and um, so your heart kind of gets irritated um, so that is what I would recommend to help with um, the IST along with talking to your doctor and seeing about beta blockers or calcium channel blockers like I said there's a ton of them out there. I had the most success with Pindolol. It didn't drop my um, blood pressure and it did really good at maintaining my heart rate at a normal level. Um, I did have a little bit of weight gain with that. I think I ended up gaining about 10 pounds, I think, when I took that. But when I stopped taking it, all of that weight came off and I'm back to the weight that I was before, um, before I started taking beta blockers. So. Um, most definitely um, look into that. Um, but I think that that was all of the questions that I got on my previous videos. So now for my new diagnosis. I received three new diagnoses um, last, in the last month. Exciting, but also scary and disappointing at the same time. Um, I was diagnosed with 
hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, systemic lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis. I received my EDS diagnosis a month and a half ago, and then um, two and a half or three weeks later, I received my um, systemic lupus and rheumatoid arthritis diagnosis. Um, and I'm still trying to process all of that. Um, we've suspected that I was struggling with something for a long time, like I said in my last video or two videos ago. Um, but no one could ever figure it out. But my um, PCP finally figured it out with very expensive um, specialized blood work. But it all came back and um, it got strong positive for rheumatoid arthritis and for systemic lupus. So it's crazy to finally have a diagnosis. It is scary at the same time because now I know what to expect my future will look like. Um, and I also know how it's affecting my body. So for those of you that don't know, Ehlers-Danlos is a connective tissue um, disorder. And I will get more into that in another video because EDS in and of itself is, there's so much information and it affects so much. So that, will be a whole nother video. Um, systemic lupus, same thing with that. I will probably go over all of my new diagnosis in a second video later on. Um, and the rheumatoid arthritis is the reason for my joint pain that I have been feeling for forever. Well, it's probably a mix of the rheumatoid arthritis and the EDS. Who knows what, um, but it all makes sense now. And it's great to have a diagnosis, but it's been extremely hard to process it as well um, and not really knowing what to do with all that information. Um, so, still working on that. Um, for my new idea, I created an Instagram um, originally with this idea, um, but I decided that I kind of want to implement it into my channel as well. Um, I want to start a new series called Life After Diagnosis. Um, what it's like, you know, receiving a diagnosis and then going from there, figuring out what your life is going to look like, what changes you have to make, how to cope with it, how to deal with it, um, how to still have hope in the midst of it all. Um, Lula May, can you not eat right now? So I think that that is the new series. Now that I have multiple diagnoses and it's not just inappropriate sinus tachycardia anymore, I would like to make a new series called Life After Diagnosis. Um, and just kind of document and that way maybe someone will stumble across the videos and be able to see from when I got diagnosed to where I'm at current um, the struggles the ups and the downs the specialist um, tests lab results braces I mean all of that kind of stuff and maybe feel a little bit less alone um, and that is one of the biggest hurdles that I've had is and it's not even it's not lonely like you don't have anyone there. It's lonely in a completely different instance because your odds are you're dealing with something that no one in your close circle of friends has ever dealt with before. And so you feel lonely in the diagnosis, in the way that your body feels and the things that you struggle with, your mindset every day, the um, depressive episodes that come and go, the anxiety, all of that kind of stuff. You feel so... Um, lonely in that and so to be able to have a series or a group of videos that someone could watch and connect with um, and you know relate to um, I think that that would be awesome to be able to help other people to not feel lonely um, so that is my hope and my goal with that series I hope that it goes well because in my mind it's gonna go great but things don't always work out the way that we want them to but I'm hopeful and I think that it'll be great and I think that I will be able to bring people um, hope and things to relate to and answers and just community in general and that is really my um, the big overall picture for my entire channel but especially for all this stuff relating to health and medical because I know that in the past when I've searched for videos about inappropriate sinus tachycardia or even you know things about EDS or rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus it's really hard to find things um, that are easily relatable, um, that, you know, you get answers from, that you get good knowledge from. So my hope is for my channel to be an outlet of knowledge and community, um, but we'll see how that goes. So I'm excited about that. 
Um, I'm sorry if this video is long. Um, I'm already at 21 minutes, but I'm hoping when I make cuts that it'll be shorter. Um, I just talk a lot. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love being able to answer them and be helpful in any way that I possibly can. Um, I think that's one of the ways that I find hope in my situation is knowing that because I've gone through this for the last several years, I can now give answers to other people and be helpful. So um, continue to leave me comments or suggestions or whatever down below. I love it. I love hearing from you guys. Um, and I hope that you all have a great evening or morning or afternoon, wherever it is that you're at. Um, and yeah, so have a great night guys. Bye.